You're Kevin Bartlett. Tell us what are the pertinent things you think you'd like us to know about yourself. 403 games, I'll start you off. Mainly I'm just a husband, uh, Sam, no, uh, who's got eight grandchildren. That's mainly who I am. Now you and uh, Denise and I have an indirect relationship, uh, which will surprise I'm not surprised, you. Sam. No, no, you will be surprised because I got four weeks for uh, smacking Bill Barrett, the late Bill Barrett, on his knees yes. when he was kneeling. I got four weeks for it because he'd just poleaxed Bill Goggin <clears throat> and I thought I'll fly. Accidentally. Hmm? It would have been an accident. Line him up from about 40 metres yeah, away and just tried to knock his head <laughs> off. And I tell you what, Johnny Newman then, oh, keep out of it, John. So I rushed in and just the spur of the moment slapped him, gave him a just slap across, got four weeks for him. Mm. So that's my relationship with Bill Barrett. But you have, uh, you and Denise have a relationship with Bill Barrett because I think <laughs> Bill used to take Denise out or words to well, that. He took Denise out a couple of times. A couple of times. He was probably taking about 20 others out at the same time, yes, Billy. that's right. He was a magnificent player, Billy, and a great, great friend of mine. It was very sad when he passed away. It was. A couple of years ago. Yes. But, but Billy, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was working in sort of fashion, and Denise worked yes. in, you know, a shop that was handling some of those fashions, and yes. Billy obviously uh, uh, took Denise out a couple of times. But, but he made the mistake, Sam, of taking it along to the, <laughs> the 1967 preliminary final yes. when Tommy Hafey sent us all along to watch uh, Carlton, you know, play against Geelong because mm -hmm. the Tigers were going to play the winner. And, uh, and as a result, uh, he gave us all tickets in alphabetical order, you know, Burke, Bartlett, Farm, you know, Clay, all that sort of stuff. Barrett. And uh, Barrett and uh, Billy <laughs> turned up with his girlfriend at that stage and uh, he sat down. He was um, very studious. He watched the game, taking down all the marks, kicks and handballs. And whilst he was doing that, I was watching his girlfriend, Denise. <laughs> And we've, and we've been married for 50 years. <laughs> oh, fantastic. What have you been doing to get over the uh, pandemic? Well, like How everyone have you been else, filling in time? Well, like everyone else, Sam, uh, you know, you're in isolation. So you're unless, just, unless you're protesting or out on a no, uh, march. No, no, just isolation. No, I wasn't out marching. You're not supposed to march, Sam. Oh, no, you're, you're not supposed to. You've got 1.5 metres because Dan Andrews told us you couldn't even play golf because it was a matter of life and death, as you know, Sam. I hear tell that you go out into your estate and speak to the birds out there. I see you <laughs> posted that. Well, there was no one else to speak to, Sam. What do you chat to them about? Well, I was talking about the state of the game, Sam. We've got to get rid of density around the ball. The only people I could talk to were the cockies, and, um, yeah. and Chirpy the cocky came down. and Chirpy? Chirpy, that's yeah. his name, Chirpy, came down. And Can he actually speak? Got he does, he many does. Words. he's very good, he's very good. Can you call your Kev? He speaks three languages, and uh, he, he flew in with his flock, <laughs> and uh, they were very, very interested in what I had to say about the game. Every player falls out every now and again, don't they? Um, I did at Geelong for various reasons. Cause you come to Richmond, why didn't you come? We had you at Tigerland. You were coming. I, 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 I was uh, asked to come by uh, you the were, late... You wanted to come. I uh, came up just as I think you were uh, trying to leave. Tony Jewell, I think, uh, decided he would uh, put you on the forward line in one game and you then got the brace and bits, I think, and decided you might want to play elsewhere, or is that not right? Oh, you're going back a long time, Sam. I don't, oh, of course I am. I, I think that one stage there, Sam, as you know, you can, um, <coughs> maybe some people think that you've been at the club too long and, uh, you know, they'd like to move you on. And, you know, I never, I never whinged or moaned to anyone at the, at the Richmond Football Club. All I said was that, you know, if, if you'd like me to move on, I'll move on. And uh, I was captain at the time, so I resigned as captain. You called their bluff. I wanted to go and play at that stage if I was leaving Richmond. Uh, to go and play with Tommy, who, who had left and gone to Collingwood, yes. because Tommy was my great friend and uh, great mentor. So, and why didn't you go idea, there? Basically, because Tommy and I were great friends. I think he felt that maybe I might regret the fact that I didn't play my whole career at Richmond, and he might regret it as well as my so friend. So he dissuaded you not to do it. After a long, long time, yeah, yeah. After, and we had a lot of debates about it and talks about it. You had and no regrets about not going? No, I, well, I, I didn't. I loved the, I loved the Richmond yes. Football Club. I never wanted to ever leave the Richmond Football Club. It was only at the time that, you know, I had very, very strong feelings that um, 
there was some people, not Tony Jewell, by the way, you no. mentioned Tony. Tony was magnificent yeah, to me. Yep. Others in the club, I felt, just felt I'd, I'd finished. And I didn't think I was finished as a player. In fact, I played another four years, so I think I probably <laughs> proved to myself that I was right and they were wrong. One of the great moments that we had on the 25 years on the footy show was when we had the actual great man himself, Captain Blood, Jack Dyer, came into the studio. He's coming through and I let go. Oh, it was one of the most beautiful time bumps I've ever done. <laughs> oh, he went up in the air and stayed there a while and come down. <laughs> it seemed like everyone in the country had heard of Jack Dyer. And there's a great photograph shows Jack Dyer running down the race onto the ground and the people on the side of the race and you could see the hatred on their faces and the booing, you know, and yep. pointing at him, yep. you know, as Jack Dyer was running out. First time I ever met Jack Dyer in my life. I'd only ever seen him on television. I was playing in the under 19s. I was playing in the centre. They bounced the ball at the opening bounce. The ball went straight up in the air. The Ruckman got the tap. A bloke came from, from behind me somewhere and went bang like that, and I was gone. I lasted one second of the game. In the opening minute? One, one yep. second. I yep. lasted one second. They <laughs> bounced the ball, Sam. Not a minute, a yep. second. Yep. They carted me off uh, the ground. Uh, they thought I'd broken my hip. I was in yep. a tremendous amount of pain. My mum and dad were still outside the ground waiting yep. to come in to actually get into the ground. Yeah. By the time they got in, I was already up uh, in the race uh, waiting for the ambulance to take me to the old Prince Henry Hospital. And I'm laying there in the, in the change rooms there, virtually by myself, and uh, I looked up and there was Jack Dyer. Jack Dyer uh, came in to, uh, to see me. First time you'd ever... First time I'd ever met Jack Dyer yeah. in my life. He, he didn't know whether I was ever going to play a game of <laughs> AFL football. I was only an under-19 player at the time. Why he was even at the ground at 8.30 watching Richmond under-19s, I'm not quite certain. And then why he took the time to come all the yeah. way down to the rooms to see a person Fantastic. he'd never met in his life and came down and, and consoling me a bit, you know. And he said, you've hurt yourself? And I said, yes, I can't move and sore and all that sort of stuff. And he said, um, you'll be all right, son. He said, by Did tomorrow, he? he said, you'll feel a million dollars. Now, <laughs> Jack obviously knew a lot about breaking collarbones, <laughs> but I was in the Prince Henry Hospital for two weeks. <laughs> had, had a huge operation on my hip. Yeah. And it took me about 12 months to recover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, the night has started. Give it a kick, the accelerator. Like a rocket ship, Sam. Fantastic. Hey. Yeah, no, you got hey, everything. Sam, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>